Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm rounding up the Tableau Conference Keynote in 2023 in just under 15 minutes. We've got no time to waste. Let's get stuck in right now. The keynote was an hour and a half long, broken down into six key sections. Let's just go ahead and list them out now. First, we had the introduction. This pretty much set the tone for the whole conference and answered a few questions about Tableau, Salesforce, and the community in general. The second section was actually a little bit of context setting for the whole of the rest of the keynote. It was a little bit of context setting, talking about the industry in general. The third section was about Tableau and AI. This was the first main section. Tableau really showcasing what they're going to be doing with AI going forward. The second section was really a story about telling people how Tableau fits into any part of any analytics stacks through embedding. And they announced a couple of new features here. We'll break them down soon. The third section was about Salesforce Data Cloud. Tableau termed this as trusted data for all, but in essence, they showed how Salesforce and Tableau work together. And then last but not least, we had devs on stage. Devs on stage is, of course, something that has always been separate, but in the last two conferences, it's been tagged onto the end of the keynote. And we had an absolute blockbuster range of features showcased here. So what I will do over the course of the next seven days is I will make a video on each of the features that were announced there just to keep this video nice and short for you so you can get a hint of what happened in the keynote. Right, let's get into the first section, the introduction. So right out of the gate, it's worth recognizing the new layout for conference. It was a very different kind of feel. It's the Salesforce feel that we're familiar with seeing at things like Dreamforce. But nonetheless, I think Tableau did a good job of making it feel like a Tableau atmosphere. We still had a big screen and a stage up front, but then you had the middle space where the presenters were walking through. Really interesting look. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. After that, we kind of went on to a couple of other interesting things. First of all, we obviously had the 20 year celebration of Tableau. We also had uh, Ryan Ate being announced as CEO at the conference. That makes a ton of sense because that's where people are. This is where the headlines come from. And if you see my recent video, I kind of highlighted that this would probably happen. So really good to see it here and obviously hope to see the news and outcomes coming from that. It was really interesting when Ryan himself was talking, he actually called out the issue around customer support that has been referenced in lots of different places, including the Gartner Magic Quadrant. That was super interesting to hear. And he announced something called the Tableau Success Plan that's going to be coming in the later months. This might be a direct response of not just trying to resolve the problem, but trying to go ahead and do better than we've ever done before, maybe with the product. So let's wait and see what that has to in store for customers uh, coming forward. Tableau then moved on to celebrating the community. This was really important because I think it really helped sort of break the ice of the conference. Now, this conference to me had a little bit of attention in the keynote because uh, everyone is really keen to see like, what is Tableau going to do? How is Tableau going to innovate? And in order to answer that question, first, I think Tableau has to put you in the right sort of frame of mind. And talking about the community was a really good way of doing that. Putting familiar faces, people that you've hopefully interacted with in the community. And if you haven't, calling out all these people to show that the Tableau uh, community is really a community. It's like a family. And so by getting the visionaries on stage, getting the ambassadors called out, user group leaders, highlighting all the different ways that Tableau is helping people develop data skill. The overall message is that, look, we're on this journey together. And it was really good to see everyone there in the middle, this sort of circular setup. I don't think that was coincidence. It's very deliberate, even though it maybe speaks to a setup that Salesforce already has. So it was a really good sort of setup. And I think it maybe brought everyone's sort of barriers down a little bit and opened people up for the next section where Francois started teeing up some of the things we were going to see in the keynote. Let's talk about that. Now, to set the context for the rest of the keynote, there was sort of a small little bit of almost like glue. Essentially, Tableau needed to set the scene and they talked about the chasm between data and people in every organization and how uh, organizations still feel like not many decisions are data driven. And so um, this was really interesting because I think it's still true. Tableau has been on this mission for 20 years and they've acknowledged many times that there's still a lot of work to do. Um, they've helped sort of start this journey, but organizations need a lot more help. Now, they did this by announcing a new day for data. This is kind of like a tagline to say, look, from this day onwards, we're taking a new direction. And Based on what comes later in the keynote, you're going to see why I think that was appropriate. But nonetheless, they did it in the following context. They were talking to consumers, developers, IT professionals, and of course, analysts. Those were sort of the four headline groups they were talking to. And so if you're any one of those users, this keynote's for you. And so let's get stuck into some of what was announced throughout the rest of this keynote. Now, I have to preface this next section by saying Tableau had to talk about AI at this conference. AI has just mothballed the entire technology industry. And whilst they'll all admit they're still scrambling to figure out where it's useful, how it works, and everyone's basically just throwing everything at the kitchen sink, 
they still had to talk about it. And so this next section was about how Tableau is using AI. And it was split into two sections. First and foremost, the way Tableau is already using AI. Let me pull up my notes here because I can't remember all of this off the top of my head. Um, firstly, there's obviously been investments into AI over the last few years. We've had Ask Data, Data Stories, Explain Data, and of course, Salesforce had Einstein. So AI has been powering all of this technology. And so I think it's important for everyone to remember that because it might seem uh, that AI is just something in the last few months, but actually um, ChatGPT did something. It made it sort of a colloquial term and it's made it a term that everyone's now paying attention to. So Tableau, when they sort of preface this stuff, they have to kind of explain that, look, we're not just jumping on the bandwagon. We've been part of this train for some time. And then they moved on to their announcement uh, called Tableau GPT. Now, this is a super sort of hard thing to explain. I sort of want you to bear with me here. And the, the reason this is, is because when you've heard of chat GPT, people have often thought that GPT is a technology that chat GPT and only chat GPT has actually innovated. GPT is just a type of technology that works specifically around large language models. And any company can essentially build technology using GPT technology. And so in this case, Tableau themselves have been investing time and effort into building their own large language model that works within its products. And so it's colloquially named Tableau GPT. But when you see this name, you might think, oh, they're just, you know, deleting chat in front of it and putting Tableau and calling it a product. Well, it can seem that way, but that's actually not the case. And so you're probably wondering, well, what is it then? Well, the thing is, is that this is an underlying technology. The way you have to think of it is you have to think of it a bit like the way Hyper works. Hyper is a, is a data source engine, if that makes sense. It's sort of a way of moving data from one place to the next in a fast and performant way. And it works in Tableau Prep. It works on Tableau Server. It works on Tableau Mobile. All of these technologies use Hyper and Tableau GPT is very similar. It's not a feature. It's not one thing. It's going to be an underlying technology that turns up in lots of different capabilities. And actually throughout this keynote, we saw it in Tableau Prep. We saw it in the embedding platform coming up with different ideas. And then we also saw it here inside of the Tableau Pulse, which was the next thing they announced. Tableau Pulse being a new feature building off the work they've already done on metrics. So let's hop into Tableau Pulse. Now to tee up Tableau Pulse, they essentially brought a customer on board. They had a short promo video talking about John Lewis and partners and how they're using Tableau to push the business forward. It was sort of put to users as if, you know, John Lewis and partners are already using this new capability with Tableau Pulse. But I think that was just maybe a little bit of stage, staging and storytelling. It might actually be the case because this feature is probably still in development and it's probably still being sort of, you know, worked on. But they needed to bring it to life. And I think John Lewis and partners said, yeah, look, we are going to be using this feature in the way that you've described it. So it kind of makes sense. Now, they moved on to basically what feels to me like... Tableau Metrics Unleashed. So Tableau Pulse is essentially this, um, think of it as a place, think of it as a landing stage, right? Think of it as a new tab on the left-hand side of Tableau Online or Tableau Server that allows you to view certain bits of information. And previously, I would have called these just metrics. Metrics are essentially the capability where you can go to a dashboard, pick a data point, and then create a, a sort of a number or a chart that is driven by that data point throughout time or throughout a certain context. This interface, this Tableau Pulse setup is another level. Essentially, it allows authors to build these metrics without having to use a dashboard or visualization and then present them in a place, which is Tableau Pulse. And then once a user is in Tableau Pulse, what is happening is that Tableau GPT technology is sort of being enhanced into the whole product. So you can get prompts, for example, what questions to ask. You can type in questions yourself and Tableau will go off and analyze it. But you don't have to type those questions in a way that's prescriptive. You can ask, for example, they showed a demo of asking Tableau, what else should I know about? And it came up with an answer because it understood the sort of points of the question and it had a good understanding of the data source and the metadata to go and do that analysis for you. And of course, the whole time you can always step out of this experience straight into something familiar if you're an analyst that allows you just to build and play with a chart. So that is a very brief description of Tableau Pulse. I'll do a separate video breaking this down, but I think it's just important to call out that staging and that orchestration of how this all comes together. It's a whole range of features, Tableau Pulse being the new thing, Tableau GPT being the underlying technology, 
and metrics, what we used to know as metrics, being unleashed into this new capability with a dedicated home. Let's move on to the next part of the keynote. Now, Francois then moved us on to Pedro, who talked a bit about embedding. Now, the thing about embedding is embedding has been sort of this momentum that's been growing over the last two years. And the most important thing that I think has changed in embedding, which I'm going to cover in a separate series of videos, has been the embedding API version 3. That seems to have opened up a whole world of possibilities, and it feeds nicely into some of the announcements here at the keynote. Um, what Tableau did is they started off by reminding everyone what's been released, because there's been a lot. There's been something in every release for the last year. And then Tableau dropped, I think, the most important thing at this whole conference. When I first saw this, and I have to say, I didn't first see this in the keynote. I saw it a while ago. When I first saw this and I heard about it, I my mind was blown. Tableau announced something called the Tableau VizQL data service. And what this fundamentally means is a decoupling of the way Tableau works. And by that, what do I mean? Well, let me, let me use an image to explain this. I'll put something up on screen. When you build a visualization and you then put it on Tableau server and Tableau renders the visualization, there's a series of steps in the pipeline. The first one is obviously getting information from the data source, feeding it, running all the queries, and then generating your viz. What this announcement is basically talking about is decoupling that. So now you can have an application query data from Tableau without having to render anything. So it allows developers to build applications and technology on top of VizQL, Tableau's proprietary data engine that you know requests data from data sources and requests data from lots of different services. Now, there wasn't too much detail in this keynote. We didn't go into sort of all the weird uh, demos and quirks that you might have around things like virtual connections and all of that, but if Tableau have really implemented this really well, this could be absolutely mind blowing because it could open up a world of applications that sit alongside and on top of Tableau. So super excited to see how this works and super excited to see how Tableau enables this throughout the whole extensions universe. I'm hoping that's going to be something that's possible, have an extension inside of a dashboard that's able to call this service and do incredible things. That would be amazing. Anyway, that's a very brief rundown. Again, I'll break this down in more detail in a separate video. Um, Tableau then finished this section by talking and giving a demo of how this works, essentially showing an embedded platform solution from a company called Cumulus Bank, and they walked through all the different things you can do, embedding the uh, visualization building interface that's now possible as of, as of a year and a half ago. And then, of course, showing how this VizQL data service can query data just using a few lines of code. And the very last thing, they talked about the Tableau embedding playground. Now, if you've heard about this before, you might know Andre. Andre uh, built an embedding playground previously in his previous role at the Information Lab. And of course, Tableau has basically taken that idea and taken it to 11 by building it out and adding a whole load more of drag and drop capabilities to it. So super exciting to see. Let's move on to the next section about Salesforce Data Cloud. Now, this section about the Salesforce Data Cloud was super interesting. Essentially, it hinges around Salesforce, and it's a capability that I'll try and explain in, a, in, a, in, in as short detail as possible. First of all, you have to ingest all your data into Salesforce Data Cloud. Once the data is there, you can start to sort of draw these relationships, build out a data model essentially across all your data sources. And then once you've done all that, once you've invested all that time and effort, it's very easy to just take all of that work and use it straight away in something like Tableau, whether it's in the browser or in Tableau desktop. They showed a demo of downloading a single data source that already had relationships built. And you have to be honest, if you're an analyst, this is sometimes the bread and butter of your work, finding the right data source and making sure it has the right things in it to do the work. And so if you can build this sort of collective hive mind of information that keeps this place, uh, that keeps this information centrally, then I think it's a super compelling reason to consider Salesforce if you don't already have something that's doing this. And so, um, you know, Salesforce is always a bugbear in the room sometimes when you're in the tablet community. I think at the beginning of the conference, Francois said something about Salesforce, one person cheers, and, you know, Francois had to say, yeah, we can celebrate Salesforce. And you have to be honest, like, you know, this is going to happen. This is the way forward. This is always going to be sort of the unique selling point that Tableau has working really well with Salesforce data. Um, the other thing that I thought was super interesting here is it's very evident that Salesforce is now using hyper technology to make the Salesforce platform work. That's sort of the other way of looking at this. If you're if you're sort of a Salesforce user, you'll look at this and you'll go, oh, okay, this kind of innovation really wasn't possible because Salesforce didn't have the sort of analytical power in the back end to make these things work. And with hyper and some of the innovation from Tableau, 
these things are starting to move again. And I think that's a good thing to celebrate for your Salesforce users. So um, that was good to see. Right. Let's move on to the thing that I love most, devs on stage. Now for devs on stage, I counted 17 features showcase. I think this is the most number of features I've ever seen on a devs on stage. And it was kind of hard to sort of realize this because a lot of it was sort of joined together. So the key things they showed um, were Tableau Prep, Tableau Public, Tableau Desktop, and Tableau Server. Of course, those are the core products. So that's how they sort of packaged them together. But it wasn't sort of as clear cut as that. They sort of flowed through the different demos in a really interesting way. Again, I've said this already, I'll do a separate video on each of these 17 features. I think they all deserve it. So over the next week, be sure to subscribe and follow the playlist that this video is in to find out more about the features. But let's call out some of the highlights. So the first one I'll talk about is Tableau GPT. We actually saw some practical use cases of Tableau GPT working both in Tableau Pulse, but now we also had it solve a problem in Tableau Prep. There was Tableau GPT in the calculation window that wrote a piece of regex to go and get the code to extract emails. That's the kind of stuff that I think is mind blowing. That's what we were all going to do in chat GPT, but to be able to do it inside of Tableau Prep without having to do all of that other stuff, that's simply sensational. Now I hope this doesn't require things like Tableau Cloud, and I hope this kind of doesn't it doesn't get limited to people who uh, are using cloud technology. I'd love to see it in Tableau Server as well. So let's wait and see the details of this before we get too excited. The other area that got a whole load of love is Tableau Public. Tableau Public got a whole suite of UI changes, the ability to sort and filter, the ability to add pronouns. And then moving on from Tableau Public, we also got some capabilities in Tableau Desktop. For example, shared modeling in a data model. So instead of just having uh, you know single relationships going out, you can now have a data model that looks a bit more familiar with something like Power BI, essentially allows you to build out multiple relationships without having to constantly bring the same thing in. And then obviously, as you're building your visualization and you're giving the context to Tableau, it's able to switch between these models dynamically. For accessibility, we have the ability to edit alt text. So that's the ability to essentially add the alternative text that you normally get with visualizations. In previous releases, they actually added this capability using the data stories capability to sort of enhance that. But now it's a separate thing that you can edit as part of the interface. We got geocoding natively inside of Tableau, so you don't have to go off to third-party geocoding services. The desktop products and I assume the web product will have this built in. Again, I really hope this doesn't need the cloud, but we need to wait for the detail to find that out. We also got some nice features around charting. We saw a demo of a Sankey chart being built really, really quickly. And that was super cool because I've actually shown a separate video of how quick and easy that is. But to me, that's a hint. That's a hint of more chart types coming. And I actually think Francois called this out because he said, We've got the core audience that we're going to focus in on, and that's what we think is analysts, people who use the desktop product day in, day out. Now, there were a couple of other small things, but again, I'll go through these in more detail. Go ahead and watch the keynote yourself. Um, what I'll try and do is I'll try and put timestamps of the keynote so you can go to Salesforce Plus and just look at the uh, individual timestamps. Uh, but I have to do that in a way that doesn't mess up my own timestamps here. So be sure to go ahead and check those out. But that's pretty much it. That's the keynote in a nutshell. Those are all the things I wanted to call out. I really want to try and keep this brief. It's always impossible, but hopefully this has been a helpful roundup of everything in the Tableau keynote. As I said, we've got more videos coming up this week. Stay tuned and I'll catch you in the next one.